Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson. And we are happy to have you join us. Happy New Year. We hope you all had a Merry Christmas if you celebrate that or Happy Kwanzaa. And um, we wished people Happy Hanukkah on our last mm -hmm. show. So we're glad you're with us. Our first segment is going to be talking about New Year's. I'm sorry. First segment is going to be talking about the top news stories of 2017, and we are so honored to have with us Newton Mayor Seti Warren, who has been Newton Mayor for many years. Eight years. Eight years. My last day was Monday. Oh my gosh! So I'm newly former Mayor of Newton. Right. I did not know that. Right. Yes, yes. Well, Newton is going to be missing you. I'm, I'm missing well, I heard the job. The already. first woman mayor of Newton. Yes, 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 yes. She'll do a great job. Ruth Ann Fuller was sworn in on Monday. And yeah. so, so I I was aware of Yolanda um, mm -hmm. in Spicer Framingham. in Framingham. Yeah. And even though I grew up in Newton, as we've discussed, I it was completely off my radar. Yeah. So what is the name of the Newton mayor? Ruth Ann Fuller. Yeah. Ruth Ann Fuller. City councilor. And uh, we had a great transition. And uh, so, she's going to do a terrific job. I'm really excited. So, oh, it's a great uh, inauguration ceremony. I'm feeling... Uh, the pangs of missing right. uh, going into City Hall every single day. Right. Uh, but uh, sh uh, the city's in good hands. Yes. Well, and rumor uh, has it you're going to run for governor. Is that what? I don't know that it's a rumor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's definite. It's definite. So, I hope it's out there. <laughs> right. I hope it's out there. It's out there that um, yeah, you are running good. for governor, yes. and we are delighted <clears throat> to have you share some of your time with us because we know you're very busy. Yes. Um, but we also. We also yeah. know that um, people want to get to know you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought that having you come in and, and talk a little bit about your perspective on things like top news stories yeah. and also the resolutions um, for 2018, which was going to be our second segment, Fantastic. And would be a, a wonderful yeah. thing. Great. And it would be a great yeah. opportunity for you to kind of just talk about your ideas on yeah. kind of what we've had go on in the last year. It's It's been an mm. interesting year. To <laughs> say the least. To say the yes. least, yeah. you know. That's yes. one word. And, um, <laughs> right. You know, as I was kind of searching, as I always do, and Margie always does when we look at um, – it was a pretty tumultuous year. I mean, I work in disaster response, so there was a lot of terrorist events, obviously a lot of hurricanes. Um, we have nuclear war that's a little threatening right now. Um, so there are a lot of things this year that I think for many years we hadn't thought about. I mean, certainly we talked to, thought about hurricanes and, and right. terrorist events, but this year seemed to be really kind of escalated all of those situations. and. And go ahead, Mark. So I was just going to say, um, what I, when I went to look for top news stories for 2017, mm -hmm. a few things came up, mm -hmm. and um, the one that I that I grabbed is something called Newsmax, and it it actually kind of listed the top Twitter mm -hmm. list, which is it is an interesting thing to come up with. I don't think of Twitter as as necessarily a very you know authentic reliable source but what they did was they took the top 15 stories that people talked about mm -hmm. right. and on twitter and i guess you know that's that's a pretty active source of communication right now i think too also like well and also some older people that right. might be in the white house so the number, <laughs> the number one at different the, times of day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all the well, early morning mostly right. i think yeah. so um the number one thing, no surprise, mm -hmm. they had on their list of the top news stories was the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was on the NBC top news story, too. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so this is just talking about um, became 45th president on January 20th. Mm -hmm. um, executive actions signed right away, one of which was the Keystone Project moving forward, despite the protests from Native Americans. Um, the travel ban. I was going to cry. And then April, um, the airstrikes in Syria. Hmm. And um, the Paris Accord that got pulled out of. Yeah. And tax reform. Um, and then the tour of Asia, 12-day tour of Asia. And, uh, and then the last, oh, one of the last things was recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, which we know now, um, the United Nations mm. all balked at and seemed to be no one else on board with that. Mm. So, any thoughts on any of those? <laughs> yeah, it's like I have many thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yes, I know. <laughs> you know, a few things uh, that I think about, and 
you know, after the president got elected earlier in the year, one of the things that I uh, was saying to my constituents in Newton and beyond uh, was that we have to push back against any policy that hurts people or is that, that is un-American. I right. mean, you mentioned a few of these policies through the uh, list you went through. Certainly the Muslim ban is something Absolutely. that does nothing uh, for us, but it, that is divisive and is bigoted. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly his proposal to ban transgender people from the military. Yes. I'm an Iraq war veteran. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's wrong. It's bigoted. It goes against our values. doesn't make us more safe. The proposal to federalize police officers is wrong. Uh, yeah. This tax bill is wrong. Yeah. We've got to stand up and say no. Right. Um, I've been doing it as a mayor. I've been doing it as a gubernatorial candidate. Yes. At the same time, mm -hmm. there are people that voted for Donald Trump mm -hmm. that did not vote for him for those reasons. Right. Right. There are 7,000 people that voted for Donald Trump yeah. in my hometown, Newton, Massachusetts. Wow. 93 communities across the Commonwealth that voted for Donald Trump right. in the state of Massachusetts. Donald Trump got more votes than Charlie Baker did. One of the things I learned on, uh, in my active duty mm -hmm. uh, time in Iraq is that we needed to reach out to people that thought differently, looked differently, in order to get through right. that year. I was in Iraq. I just deployed, Iraq War veteran. We need to do the same thing right here. Right. We've got to reach out to those people. Uh, the worst thing that Donald Trump has done has made enemy, uh, neighbors into enemies. Absolutely. Right. Even and family members right. yes. can't talk around the dinner table right. yes. at, at holidays or any kind of gathering because it, it is such a divisive issue and there's yeah. so much anger in it. Well, it's think, not just opinions. It's, you know, how could you yeah. think that? It's right. really an emotional it's, issue. It's dividing us. I mean, right. I find it. I mean, I come from Idaho and my family's mm. very Republican. And it's mm. very hard to discuss the issues with them because they see the things very differently than the way I see it. They see, you know, they don't see this as, or they're not paying attention to mm -hmm. these issues. They're, they're thinking that he's cutting taxes and he's helping people and he's, sure. you know, because yeah. the way other news is, is broadcasting yeah. it. And it's, I have to say it's, and I'm pretty outspoken and it's pretty frustrating mm. talking you know, trying to have a civil conversation. I have very heated conversations all the time because of my work. And those those conversations are almost more uncomfortable. And it's unfortunate because the way this this administration has come forward is it's it's my way or the highway. And I really think there's not a lot of inclusion. I mean, I really think the president should unite us. <laughs> we are well, the United States. Obviously. Yeah, you know he what I mean? Do. He, should, he should be doing a lot of things. Yeah. But this is a time where people and cities and towns and states need to take that yes. responsibility upon themselves. Yeah. One of the things I did, I've been reaching out to folks, uh, just like I said, that voted differently in that election. Yeah. Uh, you know the town of Wichita, Massachusetts? Of course, yes. yeah. I uh, went there mm -hmm. recently, um, actually twice. I went there in the beginning of this year and then uh, a few weeks ago. The reason why I went there is because Boston Globe profiled Wichita, Massachusetts. Yeah. It was one of the towns that went for Donald Trump in the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. They profiled um, two owners of the hometown diner there, mm -hmm. yeah. Jesse um, and his girlfriend, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. And I, I called them up because I was having discussions like Curious. we are now about yeah. reaching out to folks. And so I went up there. I called them. I said, can I come up and That's great. sit right. down? And I want to understand what's going on. He said, mm -hmm. I said, I'm thinking about running for governor. I hadn't announced yet. Yeah. He said, come on up. I'll give you an earful. Long story <laughs> short, I sat down yeah. at his counter with his girlfriend there, and he described to me uh, why he voted for Donald Trump. Yes. He said, in 1982, I went to the Navy. Wichenden was a town where people were working. It's uh, working class, Levi's, that's what I thought. Uh, manufacturing plant. Right. Yeah. Families were taking care of one another. Yep. Things were flourishing. He said, I come back two uh, years later, uh, there's an opioid den down the street. People are buying groceries yeah. from CVS because they can't afford a car right. to go to Market Basket. Right. Yeah. He said, "You why do I vote for Trump? Because Promise. it's not working. Right. And so we started talking about the state of Massachusetts. And yeah. I said, look, I don't think it's working here in Massachusetts for us. And he agreed. Yeah. And I presented some of the things that I think we need to do. Right. Single payer, so we can bring yes. costs down, health care costs down for people, make it affordable. Make sure we have transportation that gets people to where they yes. need to go. Uh, and make sure we're going higher paying jobs where people live. Right. Exactly. At the end of it, he said, I, I like what you said. Yeah. I want to help you out. Right. So, oh, I'm so glad. But these yeah. are the conversations we have to have right. with our neighbors, right. our friends, our folks. And by the way, two weeks later, I'm in Dudley Square yes. in Roxbury. Yes. yes whole uh, uh, group of folks I was talking to, uh, town hall type situation, people of color.
Yeah. And they were telling me similar stories yeah. that Jesse was. So I said, right. stop right now. Yep. Right. I was just in Wichenden, and I told the story of right. Jesse. I said, we have got to work together. We, right. have, we have more exactly. alike than we do different. Right. Different. And I think what I thank you so much for doing yeah. that. Yeah. I That's think so what Trump did, first of all, and, and I'm not going to bash him because I honestly, I think anyone who goes for that job, I, I would I could never do it. Yeah. And and good for him for trying um, and for rallying his base and everything else. I my feeling is that he played on fear. Yes. People were worried about jobs. They're yes. worried about taxes. They're worried about people, immigrants taking their jobs. Right. And he kept playing those same right. tunes. So the people who had those fears, he touched the fears and said, I will take care of that. Right. No plan or right. anything that you could really grab onto and say, this is what's going to happen. Just, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to build a wall. They're not yep. going to come. So people who were fearful and because of those things that were happening, the instability said, hey, he's going to do it. I'm all set. Right. And I understand that. And I, and I, I wish there was a magic wand we could wave when there's, right. there are difficulties, but it's not a magic wand. It's a hard Right. Road to hoe. So to yeah, speak. and it's really reaching out, person to person, right. person telling the truth. I mean, the conversation, the second conversation I had with Jesse, I went back up there a few weeks ago, yeah. was about his small business. Right. One Perfect. of the things I know mm -hmm. is that we need to support small businesses yeah, in the state. Yeah. They are not being supported by this governor. I'm We've a small got to provide, business owner, I know. <laughs> we have got to make sure, first of all, the health care yeah. costs are crushing yes. small businesses. Yes. This yeah. governor continues to ignore the issue or uh, make it more expensive. Yeah. for businesses and people to afford health care in this state. We've got to make it more affordable, but we also have to provide micro uh, loans and grants right. and also uh, toolkits for businesses to be able to uh, take that and be competitive. Yeah. So you These have are some the things creative we've got to problem do. solving skills, I see. I'm a mayor. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's how I a, think. Of a so big you, city. I can see At the that, local level. I haven't yeah. even heard of those things, and you're just rolling them off. Right. Uh, but it's right. interesting, like back to the topic of that we're, we're all on kind of the same page. Yes. And, yeah. you know, even I talk to my family about that as well. You know, like they, they have the same concerns. Right. And it's like, why is it so divisive? You right. know, and and like, how do we break down those walls? And how yeah. do we have those conversations? Right. And so how then, do we, you know, welcome that right, right. that conversation for the greater good? So that would that was only the first news story, <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Now we have, and I'll just list a couple. Yeah. Robert Mueller. Yeah. And that's the, what came in, up in the similar to you know, it's kind of in that Trump category. Yeah. Investigation into Russian interference. Yeah. And and firing people who may. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then um, the sexual harassment scandal yeah. and the rise of Me Too. Yeah. Um, the fight against terror, the terrorist attacks yeah. um, here and there and at home, uh, well, uh, abroad. And then it said horror on the home front, the mass shootings. Mm. I, I think of the Pulse nightclub thing. I think yeah. of that horrible um, country music. What was that? Jason Aldean? Yeah, in Las Vegas. Uh, in, in Vegas and just yeah. right. uh, gives me chills. Um, and then the nuclear and North Korea, yeah. natural disasters, yeah. opiate epidemic, <laughs> opiate epidemic, right. which right. is right here. We have signs that say hashtag two zero six nine in town, right. representing the number of deaths in one year. I think mm -hmm. um, Academy Award. Well, that's ridiculous. When he said the wrong name, that's really not a big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. Um, uh, fights for freedom in um, places like Zimbabwe mm -hmm. um, wanted freedom. From the military, uh, they Ultra had a military wars. takeover. Yeah. Mugabe was um, out. The Brexit blowback and national anthem protests are the mm -hmm. 15 that I have. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I was pretty close on the NBC so ones. So feel and free to pick one. Yeah. Sure. I, yeah. Just a, a few of those I think yeah. that are, are incredibly important. Um, look, we've got to make sure on, on, on Me Too that we um, have workplaces that are safe, yeah. um, that uh, when victims... Um, are able to come forward safely yeah. and report these instances. We've got to make sure those uh, procedures are put in place yeah. and they're not re-victimized. Yep. Zero tolerance is important. That means investigating every single um, complaint that comes in um, mm -hmm. and making sure that it's dealt with appropriately. We put um, zero tolerance policies in place. We made sure we did training with every employee yep. around sexual harassment. Of, of over three to four years ago. I participated in that, Chief Executive Must. 
Um, I embraced uh, the Women's Caucus uh, proposals around harassment mm -hmm. on Beacon Hill. Mm -hmm. I believe they need to be instituted. I think they mm -hmm. make a lot of sense. That was a very important story yeah. this year. Um, Thank you. The um, guns. Mm -hmm. I want to mention that mm -hmm. uh, with the no, bump the, the bump stocks, mm -hmm. and also we've got to salute our Attorney General. Absolutely. Um, I backed her when she She's said amazing. we need yeah. to close amazing, this yeah. um, assault weapons loophole. Um, I was in the military. Right. Yeah. I, I carried around an M16. Uh, they have no place right. in our neighborhoods, our streets. There's no, no use this, for them except there is to no kill use a bunch of people. We have to yeah. do everything. Now, Massachusetts has some of the toughest gun right. laws in the country. But when you have uh, a governor who's willing to appoint the head of the NRA for uh, yeah. fish and wildlife here, yeah. uh, says one thing, does another, that's right. not the kind of leadership we need. Well, We've got to make sure yeah. we have a governor that's working regionally. The yeah. guns aren't just coming in right. from within Massachusetts, they're coming outside of Massachusetts. Yeah. So we've got to support tough uh, gun laws outside of Massachusetts and in other states as well. Well, in that federal law they were trying to pass. That the conceal and carry. Yeah. Uh, that's my <laughs> police chief came up very strongly, as well as many, very strongly yeah. against uh, that, uh, that, that uh, allowing for, for folks being their weapons that's in ridiculous. Massachusetts. I mean, it's, 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 it's terrible. Absurd. It's backwards. Yeah. And then finally, the other story I do want to touch upon is the opioid crisis. Yes, thank you. I, I want to talk about this because it is not being addressed, I think, appropriately right, right. at the national level, right. nor is it being addressed in the state level. Right. I saw this as a mayor. You know, a few years back, I saw a rise in overdoses in my own community. Mm -hmm. We put an uh, infrastructure in place to deal with it, yeah. an architecture. As I started to run for governor, you know, I've been to over 150 communities across the state. Yeah. There was not one setting where someone didn't raise their hand in a home or a town yeah. hall and said, I am in recovery. I know someone who's in recovery. I know one, someone who has passed away. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do about it? Because it's right. out of control. And it's then, I started, yeah. then I started to look yeah. at the numbers, yeah. and they are staggering. Aren't they? Yeah. Deval Patrick in 2014 declared a state of emergency around opioid addiction. Mm -hmm. First state in the country, state Good of emergency. Him. Since that time, over 6,000 people have died yeah. of opioid in this small addiction state of Massachusetts. in our state. Yeah. Over five people a day are dying yeah. mm, of yeah. opioid addiction mm -hmm. in our state. Yeah. 250,000 people right. are living with addiction, and that number is growing. Yeah. This is at a cost of ten, over $10 billion a year to the Commonwealth. Health care costs, yeah. criminal justice co costs. And response by EMTs trying to save them. Exactly. Yeah. And Narcan and everything so, else. And I was going to say, look, I appreciate what the governor and some of the folks on Beacon Hill did by providing additional Narcan. Yeah. I appreciate their attempts mm -hmm. around reducing the pre prescribed But now that's not touching it. But it is not enough. It's a band-aid. The stat, yes, it is not enough. It is not enough. So I started a series of town hall discussions right. and roundtables several weeks ago. I've been to every region of the state um, over the last several weeks for the pur purpose of shining a light on this, mm -hmm. taking the stigma away, yes. Thank you. and welcoming any and all ideas out there yeah. because we can't leave any idea off the table well, you know at this moment and we need yeah, investment yeah. and resource right. i keep we, hearing community-based uh, wraparound services lifelong is right. critical we need to make that investment we need to do it now right well we actually are out of time for our first oh, segment yeah. oh. i knew this one so that was a great that was a great and, yeah. and i'm so glad you hit, you hit yeah, your top you did Good. and and so eloquently thank as you. usual yeah. thank, thank you thank you thank you um so we'll be back in about two minutes with our next uh segment which is going to talk about um you and peace and the, the, the um, New Year's resolution for 2018. And, yep. We'll be right back. Yeah. Thank you. That one. This week on The Senior View, Mayor McLeod talks to Gail Clifford and John Palmer again about all the monuments on the common. Of, mm -hmm. The brass, pl a bronze plaque. This was put in position at the end of August and the dedication was held at the Congregational Church across the street and they would have held it on the common except that the weather was very bad. So. Do you find yourself feeling down in winter? Or if you experience depression through the year, does it get worse in the colder and darker months? I'm here to tell you about winter depression and what you can do that may be helpful. Seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that tends to occur in the fall. You may lose your energy and motivation. You may feel sluggish, agitated, distracted, hopeless, and you may have problems with sleeping, 
your appetite, or suicidal thoughts. SAD can lead to social withdrawal, problems with school or work, and substance abuse. Here's the good news. You can talk with your primary care physician, your psychiatrist, or mental health professional. There are effective treatments such as counseling, light box therapy, or medication. Sometimes we feel bad in the fall and winter anyway, especially during the holidays. But if a mood slump continues for days or weeks, don't wait. Talk with your doctor or counselor for more information and support. And we're back. So this segment, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions for 2018. Um, we all probably have our own thoughts about that. I did look up some of the top 10. Um, I don't know where we want to start. Do you want to start with what your resolutions might be? Mayor? No. Former mayor? So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call you SETI. Yeah. So I probably because SETI's just fine. Yeah. So I promised my wife, Tassie, that I wouldn't force her to watch Rocky movies for the rest of the year. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak them in with my kids. Right, right. Like Silly um, and I just did the Star Wars <laughs> movies. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of the things I, I do we would love for people to think about on a serious note, you know, yeah. as a veteran, um, and you had mentioned what was happening in, uh, the, in the Korean Peninsula, mm. I think about uh, the uh, under 40,000 roughly military service men and women yeah. that are serving on that peninsula right yeah. now yeah. with all the events and unknown things that are happening. I, I would ask folks to think about those uh, people serving nice. overseas in that peninsula, on that peninsula, yeah. and other installations around the world and their families. Yes. Um, I had only done a year uh, abroad in Iraq and, uh, you know, with my fellow service uh, men and women. Uh, but there are people that do multiple uh, tours Tours, of duty and oftentimes we don't think about them and uh, and their families in particular too. So I would ask that people think about them. Could we just think about them or is there more that we could do for them? There are plenty of organizations uh, that support support, uh, military families. They're quite prolific here in the state of Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, so one resolution would be support fine. military families, that given be, that they yes. are gr- under great threat right. yep. in the Korean Peninsula. Yes. Is that Guam or is that not it, the, the same? Enti- the entire the peninsula, area. Yeah, not, including Guam and other ones. We know, you know what, what's happening there. Yeah, we know crazy. what uh, President Trump has been tweeting, and we also know what Kim Jong-il. the leader of North Korea has been saying right. as well. So we buttons, live in precarious their, times. Precar- precar- really. Precar- exactly, exactly. So, uh, 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 yeah. so all right. So I'm just going to read the top. This, these are most common um, from actually a British source, which I think is kind of funny. Um, so and these seem these seem very trivial compared to what you just said. So forgive the triviality here because what you Rocky's said is... Rocky's really serious. Though. I know, well. <laughs> There's a message behind it. Yeah, there is. Exactly. The underdog. The underdog. Yeah. The underdog. Yeah. Forget yeah. that. <laughs> and, and run up and down those stairs a million That's times. That's right. And you'll get stronger. <laughs> yes. All right. So exercise more. Apropos of running up and down stairs. Yeah. Lose weight, which seems related. Eat more healthily, which mm-hmm. is also related. Um, take an active approach to help. That's all related. Yep. Uh, n- learn a new skill or hobby. Spend more time on personal well-being. That's like the first ones. Yeah. More time with family and friends. Drink less alcohol. Stop smoking. So these are kind of more all related, intro, yeah. 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 right, of how to better yourself yeah. right. um, as opposed to reaching out. I loved what Gutierrez said, who is yes. the mm-hmm. head of UN, that this should be a year of peace. Peace yes. must so be given our the goal, unrest, our given the divisiveness yeah. we were talking about, given the terrible rhetoric and name calling between world leaders, right. um, peace would be a wonderful thing. Right. Agreed. Peace in the world. Well, it was interesting. My daughter and I talked about it this year, and I, I want to come forward with a more open mind, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like what you were talking mm-hmm. about, breaking down those bridges and or those walls that people are having about politics or, or whatever it may be. But I think just instead of the inward thinking, which I think is more popular. Fix yourself. But I also think it's commercial, too. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, like Christmas and other holidays that it's promoted sure. through commercials Jenny Craig and things. Jenny or yeah. whatever deals right. on health But funds. I think, you know, the I loved what um, Chief Gutierrez said about yes, making... that was amazing. Fl- yeah, but I mean, just looking at the world around us, not keep our eyes right. just focused on a small right. spot, but look at the world as a global, whole. Global family. Yeah. That's how I think of it. Me too. Me too. You and, know, you mentioned uh, undocumented yeah. immigrants, yeah. and I had mentioned uh, President Trump's federalization of police officers. Again, another place where we could act locally here, right. mm-hmm. regardless of the present. Right. 
I put together, um, I just, if I could share a quick yes, story. Yes, please. With you. Yeah. I put together a Trump Clinton dinner. Oh, um, I love it. Right after the election, because yeah. I truly believe in what I was telling you today, mm -hmm, that right. we've got to reach out. Mm -hmm. So we went to this tavern. Three Clinton supporters, three Cl Trump supporters. Interesting. Um, I laid down the ground rules. We're not going to relitigate the, the election. Right. We're going to talk about how, what we do to move forward. They didn't want to leave. It's been two hours ago. But something really concrete mm -hmm. came out of that dinner. A few weeks later, my city council and the Democratic City Committee came to me and asked me to put a Safe Communities Act, Welcoming Cities Act, in ordinance in Newton. Yes, So I started working yes. on it. It started to get a lot of publicity. One of the people from that dinner, a woman named Jenny Gardner, Trump supporter, called me. And she said, I'm reading that you're trying to put this in place in Newton. I don't agree with it. Tell me why. I promised you at the dinner I, I wasn't going to draw any conclusions until we had a conversation. Yes. After we had that conversation, and uh -huh. you know, I said, listen, do we really want our police officers acting as ICE agents, right. mm -mm. scaring undocumented people from going to the police yeah. when nope. they're victims, of, they could be victims of crime right. Right. and not reported or witnesses? Right. She said no. Not only did she support my position, yeah. but she campaigned for it. Of course. Good Went back her. to the Republican City well, Committee. That made sense. Yes. And she, we got 19 uh, co-doctors in the city council. Awesome. I tribute her, and we got it passed. Awesome. Um, I tribute her from getting some of those votes. There right. are some real concrete, right. specific examples. If I was the governor right yeah. now, I would not only be saying I support the Safe Communities Act, yes. but I'd be pulling in town Doing administrators, about it. Right. select uh, persons, of course. mayors, right. and really having a dialogue about what it means to get support right. we need to get it passed on Beacon Hill. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of leadership we need. Right. Unfortunately, you know, Governor Baker uh, submitted a deportation bill, folks, <gasps> that would not al allow for cities like Newton to have a welcoming orders or safe mm -hmm. community. So this, these that. elections are real choices yeah. here. And that's the thing is we we aren't, a, you know, on the lower, not lower, I, I don't know how to say this, too but on the up. smaller I mean, level, on the less connected level, we don't hear of those individual things. Right. I actually think Governor Baker's a great guy. I've been at gatherings with him, sure. nice guy. He speaks well, yeah. he presents himself well, yeah. he's a smart, but little things like that Right. Are really important to, to put put those things together. We, have we need to. something right. that's going to well, serve the people. And it's not personal. Better. I mean, as I exactly as I like saying. to it's say, there are plenty of uh, right wing Republicans that are nice guys that I wouldn't want to be governor. It's not about being a nice right. guy or not. Exactly. On the opioid addiction issue, by the yeah. way, Governor Baker sits on a panel yes. appointed by Donald Trump, run by Kellyanne Conway at yeah. the White House right now to deal with opioid addiction. Yeah. Right now. He was appointed. President Trump and Kellyanne Conway and that whole group said we declare a state of emergency, but they didn't put the resources to combat it, behind it. Oh. Same thing's happening here in Massachusetts. Governor Baker says oh. this is a crisis, talks about it, right. not putting the resources behind it. Yeah. So again, um, we've got to make mm -hmm. sure we lay out the choices in the selection. I believe the status quo is not enough. I believe we need to do more, right. make the investments, new ideas, innovation around opioids. Now, this is right. a real crisis. Governor Baker is embracing the status quo on this issue, and I well, think it's wrong. Well, federalizing, that's a big piece that we look at is the police officers are kind of our front line. They are To our opening line. that door to they getting are. treatment to these folks they are. that are suffering from they opiate are. addiction. So if they're, afraid to we, go, if they're afraid right. to go to the police. Right. And that's right. something we've worked sensitivity training with yes. our yep. police officers down yep. Fall River and New Bedford, and they've yep. done a great job. Yep. And we're seeing an increase on people recovering. Yes. Yes. You know, and we've built partnerships with those, um, you know, rehab facilities yep. and the hospitals that do the treatments and the, the community services that integrate them back into the community so they feel they're not stigmatized. Along anymore. those same lines, <laughs> you know, one of the things we know in the criminal justice reform end uh, that we've got to do, again, this election is about choices. Yes. Um, we know oh. mandatory minimums yeah. do not work. They don't. They no. don't work it's for nonviolent <laughs> drug offenders, <laughs> right? We know that. Yeah, right. And we need to remove those. Right. Again, we, this election about choices. Same old Republican stuff. Charlie Baker submits a bill to put mandatory minimums in place for right. nonviolent drug offenders right. in August of this year. Mm -hmm. So we have to, If again, I know everyone's yeah. paying attention to the Republicans in Washington. Right. But there's a Republican here. right here. Right. Right. As governor, and right. and who is putting the same type of ideology and policies in place that right. are wrong? So let for me ask you a question, because he does seem like a centrist Republican to me. Um, but where I I don't this is I I don't really understand. So where would his agenda come from? Is that from the party influencing him, or is that 
his constituents influencing him or where does he where do his ideas come from so you know the, <laughs> I don't, I don't really. by the way folks <laughs> it's a million surprise surprise Charlie yeah. Baker's a Republican yeah. I know and he's been one for a long time right as far as I know he has not been a Democrat in Swiss parties no, no. Like, maybe I have that wrong I don't I mean know. I don't at know. the end of the day he is embracing the same Republican right. so it's a party line agenda. That he's sure doing. Okay. I mean you know just recently on uh, the tax bill you know, I believe this tax bill that was yeah, promoted by this president Nobody thinks it's good. is a huge giveaway to multinationals and extreme wealth. Oh, right? We know that. Absolutely. I've come out against it strong. Charlie Baker's only comment around this was, well, there are some things that are good in it. I mean, I, look, this he is... seems to be avoiding conflict, though, more than making a statement. Yeah, well... You know what I'm saying? So I also would say to you, you know, we've gone through a list of issues. Look, we all are sitting in gridlock traffic, Right. Yeah, all day long, right? All day long, we <laughs> all drive system, over. Yep, yeah, we system. all drive <laughs> over these broken down roads yeah. and crumbling bridges, right? Infrastructure. And it just came out a few months ago. The commuter rail in the state of Massachusetts. This is federal data. Just came out. We have the worst commuter rail system in yeah. the entire country. Did you oh, know? Oh, brother, that? no. Number, yeah. we're number one. No, we're way. worse than well, New York and New Jersey. They have more cars than more that trains. How is possible? We're and they cite and they cite mechanical failures and breakdowns. Right. Uh, so I called it's the funding. governor out to task. It's funding. It, it, it is funding. 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 So I said, when this report came out, we need to make more investments in the yeah. trains and the switches and do it now yeah. so we can upgrade. Governor Baker's response was, we need to hold the line on revenue, no new revenue, and we need to de continue to push privatization. Well, the commuter rail is already privatized. Keolis is a private company right. running it. Right. So, and it's been privatized for and then, a while. Yeah. And then the Baker administration says we're going to take 15 to 20 years to fix it. My answer is, if you can't fix it sooner, get out of the way, let someone else do it. Right. We need real investment right. in our transportation system. Right. And we got so, to do it right now. So these, what you've just stated, are resolutions yes. for... Our they, state. Are yeah. they are resolute. They are indeed. For our state. Right. They so are fix indeed. the transit system. Yes. And the, uh, fix the infrastructure. Yeah. Fix the opioid crisis. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. um, make sure Me Too and and um, women are not minimized yep. and, and feel confident. Laws. Safe gun uh, right, laws. Right. Feel confident in their um, complaints being heard and honored, not yes. oh just oh it's a joke we're just yes. joking. Yes. Uh, and um, right in gun laws. Yeah. So and they're heavy issues. They affect all mm -hmm. of us. They do. They yep. affect all of us, and they're you know I think they're really a valid Absolutely. resolution. And I think you know I love the idea you're trying to get Republicans because I think everybody has the same mission in life. They don't want you know they don't want people to die. They don't exactly. want they don't want people exactly. to be Some sick from drugs. Care. But I think the majority. <laughs> yeah. I I find this world. I mean I work in a world of volunteers. And I, I look at them, and they're willing to give and, and give back so many things. Okay. And the majority of people are, are really Republicans, Democrats, Independents, whatever. Go to where people are. Yeah. Talk about what we can do together to make yeah. sure everyone has a shot. This is a generational it's, obligation. Yeah. I believe we have right. to invest in this state. Absolutely. And I agree. So let's get, let's get personal now. Um, and if anyone is at home and they want to call in and talk about some of your resolutions, yeah. we'll go back to personal resolutions, not resolutions for the state, because that's more like talking politics. Um, so let's think about what your resolutions might be, um, even if it's something as, as little as reading the newspaper every day. Mm -hmm. You know, that might be a really important mm -hmm. thing, to stay in touch with the news so we are more aware right. of what's happening. So do you have any resolutions I, yourself? I actually, which is, it's make a little time for myself so I can give more to others because mm. I'm one of those people that fill your cup so yeah it's not I mine's overflowing all the time mm, I'm overcommitted and I'm trying to give myself that 10 minutes a day where I just do something and that sounds selfish but it's I think it it recharges me and makes it me gives me an opportunity to give back to others because mm. I'm in the service field so like you know I want to I'm giving, 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 and I realize mm -hmm. that that little bit of time that I actually mm -hmm. have a cup of tea. You. Yeah, I mean, it sounds so you. silly, but just have a cup of tea. Don't look at my computer. Don't look at my yep. phone. Don't do something for someone else. Mm -hmm. And my daughter tells me, 
My daughter told me she wanted me to have that resolution, Aww. and I think we all <laughs> uh, forget, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. that we all work so hard, and, you know, and I think by taking care of ourselves, we can then take care of others. True. You know, and then we get wrapped up in reading Facebook and all of this stuff. Is that time that could be spent mm. done mm. better? I mean, can you oh, sure. go for a Facebook walk? Facebook is you, like a, yeah. a mind, a time I drain. catch myself in it all the time, time yeah. you know? And it's hard right. not to do that yeah. because... I mean, when I... And I, I love it. I love I, Facebook. I, guess, I think it's great... So that would be another resolution people might have is yeah. to minimize um, your Facebook time. Right. Because really, I mean, when I look at it, I don't want to offend anyone by right. not responding to their really exciting news and their picture from right. their trip. But at the same time, it takes me a time. long time to look through it's everyone's yeah. news. Right. Um, right. And, and I, I'm, these aren't people that I might pick up the phone and say, hey, how's it going? Right. So I like that, but at the same time, and I also think it's affecting my eyesight. Mm. So if I'm looking at this little tiny screen all the time, I think that's probably right. not great for me. So yeah. one of, I hadn't really thought of this, but right. I think one of my resolutions would be less Facebook time. Right. Mm. Or less computer time. Celia's well, like, com computer's read. a bigger screen, yeah. so I think I think for me it's that little. Yeah. Um, I don't know, because I, I do want to connect and I do want to yeah. respond, but um, maybe it's a little piece of, taking time for myself, but also right. I want my vision to still be good. Right. You know. right. And so, what about you? Gosh, you know, Rocky I was sitting movie. here thinking, yeah, other than my <laughs> Rocky movies, I just have these two beautiful children at home, nine and six, uh, uh. John and Abigail. And, you know, you, you said something that sort of touched me a little bit, and you kept talking about that you work in the first responder field. Um, I was the director of FEMA for New England as oh, well. Oh, awesome. So you, yeah. And, but, you know, this, this life of public service is mm -hmm. really a vocation. Yeah. yeah. And it can be overwhelming because you're always, I've been the mayor for eight years and yeah. in the military, and um, I also know that um, I have these two really the most important people in my life, and mm -hmm. my wife Tassie. I was gonna say, don't and, forget the third one. Yeah, well, the th the four of us, and you yeah. know, we're a real family unit. Tight family. And right. so, you know, th there's a discipline around just making sure because there's always more to do. Right. You know, whether you're the mayor or whether you're a gubernatorial right. candidate, you want to be responsive or whatever, whatever you're doing. Yeah. But really, just taking a moment. Right. Uh, some you know, oftentimes you have to structure, but just taking that moment, and stepping back, and listening to that. Uh, question about or listening to what that question might be about what your child did that day in school yeah. um you know my daughter came my daughter plays the saxophone cool mm. and i have a Silly saxophone place, i've got a trombone. saxophone yeah. so one of the things that one. i have one yeah so i taking time out so she and i can play together Aww, you I know it's an important yeah. thing it is um, and so we, we're gonna we can do that this weekend we might do it maybe we'll do it tomorrow during the, the but snow even <laughs> <of it. laughs> <laughs> Extended. We yeah. got the end, and my son loves yeah my son loves playing soccer so we so kick the ball around so just oh, yeah, so just trying to you know and they both play, play, play basketball so trying to sneak those moments in in between being all present. the things I'm doing being present and being I think present. the other thing is um, learning to say no it's hard for me to say no if someone ah, says yes. hey yep. could you help with this yep. yeah, yeah I can do that hey could you re lead this group because you're real good at this and we really need you yeah I can do that but yeah. at some point. It's too much, well, and, then and you, you can't, can't give enough, enough. Right. to each, yeah. each right. piece. So you're true. really not doing right. a service right. because you're, like you said, you're not. You need to make sure you're operating from a place of fullness and yeah. not tapped out. Right. right. Literally. Right. I was just talking to all my emergency management directors mm -hmm. pre-storm, and I'm mm -hmm. like, get some rest tonight, guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, because I'm like, they're all in a hustle. You know, I'm getting the volunteers ready for so the glad sheltering. So you, you mentioned And that. I'm like, guys, you, take the night. I'm just texting one on the way here. I I'm love like, the fact yeah. that you mentioned all yeah. these people are going to be working yes. now. They're working now. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. DPW Fire. workers, first yeah. responders. These are all my people all from, yeah. Fem you know, where yeah. I work with yeah. um, in Newton. Oh, in Newton, yeah. We should think about the the EMT. Transit oriented, yeah. the, the, the public transit all operators, it. and don't all the, these folks. We and should don't think the about. postal carriers yeah. have to carry the mail tomorrow sure. with the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We don't think about our fellow neighbors, people, and nurses practice, and doctors that are working and doctors, in the hospitals, sure. EMTs. Great I mean, people. You know, great I know people. we have school off, but still, yeah. there's a lot of you yeah. know, like I, you know, such a great point. Yeah, I think it's important to kind of look at those folks I and realize too. what those people that keep us safe. Yep. Yep. And keep everything going. Such in such a nice way. Yes, yes. You know? So on that note, 
we actually are out of time for this segment. Yeah. No. Time flies <laughs> when you have <laughs> great conversation yeah. and a lot to That's say. Great. Yeah. Do you want to? Is there anything you want to say at the end here? Or did, yeah. Is there any re- the resolution? Well, or? thank you all for having me yeah, on. This is course. this is a great yeah. show. What you're doing, great public service, and um, I'm really looking forward. Uh, to this year, not just yes. the campaign, but I'm optimistic about this state. You I'm too. optimistic that we can uh, bring our state to, to a better place and be a model in the country yes. Thanks. Um, right and now. So yes. that's why I'm in this race, uh, offer opportunity love for that. this generation and the next. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank we you appreciate so much. your time. Thank you. All right, we'll be back and we're going to talk about hunting. What are the <laughs> pros and cons? Why do people do it? Is it good? Right. Why do people not like it? Right. Let us know. See you in a minute. Thank you. This week on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, listen to music from musicians Junko Agawa and Rick Goggin. Opinion, just one voice can speak the truth. Just one voice can make a difference. Just one heart. A gun? I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al and Gal, and we love H Camp. Hey, I want to be a camp. We love H Camp. And I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. This week on The Golden Pan, Lisa and Mary connect us with Don and Beverly Moberg to make shish kebabs and pilaf. Cook faster or is the meat going to cook faster? Meat will cook faster. Okay, so we should put the chicken on first? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to put the chicken on first. Okay, so we're just putting it, so you said that it's cooked and then it's going to cook faster. Right. So we can have so easy can access to that little, we want to be able to turn on. Right. And we're back. So we're going to talk about hunting. Mm-hmm. Hopkinton has a lot of hunters. Right. We've got the Woodville Rod and Gun Club. We've got um, something over on Lumber Street, Sportsman's. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping people are watching and they're going to call in with their stories about hunters in their backyard that upset them or, or going hunting themselves um, because they're getting turkey dinner yeah. or um, whatever it is. So we'd love to have you share your your good stories and your not so good stories about your personal hunting experiences yeah. and we'll share ours i mean i i actually think hunting is very good if people follow the rules i mean and i grew up with a family that hunts and we grew up on wild meat and i believe it's a service because i was looking online there's over a hundred thousand deer in Massachusetts, and that that actually they said there were they estimate there's about twelve deer per five square miles, 12 deer. So that's but a not, lot. But not everywhere. Not, there are certain areas yeah, that have a more intense. Yeah, but actually they're getting more in urban areas and stuff like really? that because I look on the Division cool. of Wildlife and Game and they're kind of all over the place. So, I mean, I think it's it's a good thing to not only hunt deer, but, I mean, I think it, it hunting is a good thing if it's if it's done by the rules and it's not done while drinking and, and, and things like that because right. that's that's the factor that probably maybe I have an issue with hunting. A lot of folks, you know, I know that that may be part of the hunting. Um, and that's, you know, not safe, you know what I mean? But um, as a, overall, I actually think hunting is a good thing. And I enjoy, I mean, I would prefer to actually eat wild meat all the time. I mean, for myself personally. So... Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, well, we have I, lots I, of wild. I, yeah, wildlife I'm not in our from backyards. Idaho. I'm yeah. from. I'm from. I grew up in Newton. Yep. So it's more of a city <laughs> than Idaho. Yeah. Um. I and for me, I I I'm a nature lover. I'm an animal lover. So it's hard for me to watch Bambi. Yeah. Be shot. Right. Just saying. I don't like so, it either. Right. I'm not a hunter right. myself. So it's hard I mean, for me. But, what I did do is I looked at two things. Yep. Um. To be a balanced perspective, I looked up deer hunting regulations, mm-hmm. and then I looked up under PETA yeah. oh, about yeah. hunting, and, and PETA, of course, I'm going to start with that because you were just talking about some of the sure. pros. Um, so it was a crucial part of his survival 100,000 years ago, but now it's, and this is the PETA sure. language. The extreme. It's nothing more than a violent form of recreation. 
that the vast majority of hunters do not need for subsistence. So they're saying people don't need it to eat. You can go to the grocery store, um, and it's contributed to the extinction of animal species like the Tasmanian tiger and the great auk. If anyone remembers the great auk, it's a big bird looked like the dodo. Oh, right, yeah. right. I remember seeing pictures of that. Yeah. So um, anyway, less than 5% hunt, yet it's permitted in wildlife refuges, national forests, state parks, other public lands. Um, of that 5% of the U.S. population who hunt, 40%, and this says that they slaughter and maim animals on public land, and then poachers kill. So the thing is, mm. obviously the animals endure pain and suffering um, when they're injured because you, they may not necessarily kill them. Um, archery equipment may not be a kill, sure. but just a wounding. 20% um, of foxes who were wounded are shot again. Just 10% managed to escape, but then they starve. I mean, it's just really hard for me to even read this because I... I'm right. just such an animal person. I know you are too, but I understand. Right. I understand the food aspect of hunting as well. That's probably, and I should clarify that. I mean, I believe in hunting for food. I don't right. necessarily believe in trophy the hunting. Sport. I think everything you hunt, you should use, right. and you should hunt humanely. Right. I mean, you should, you know, take your time, make sure you take a good shot, and make sure you exactly. kill the animal humanely. So, right. I mean, I don't like traps. Um, you know, well, I grew up the, around traps, and I think, you know, yeah. traps are horrible. I mean, the way that traps are done, and, and they catch these snare an animal's leg. Mm -hmm. and, and then this they painful. Die. And yeah, that, I mean, that's not humane. So I think right. humane hunting, right. again, I mean, I 11 years old, I took hunter safety mm -hmm. and learned oh. how to handle a gun and yeah. learn how to shoot and all of that. And I chose not to hunt because I don't like killing things. But I wasn't, a, you know, I wasn't opposed to if someone harvested well, the and animal it, yeah. and, and used it, and I would eat it. I mean, right. So you, so and and wild meat. Oh yeah, I'm sure is much so cleaner much healthier. and yeah. healthier. You know, I, I I agree that the other thing that this article talked about was canned cruelty. So there are some things called canned hunts, oh. where there's a restricted area. Um, they mentioned Ted Turner. Oh, has, it's like a mm -hmm. farm. They pay, have those in Africa, too. Hunters pay thousands of dollars to kill bison, deer, African antelopes, and turkeys yep. on his two million it's acres. It's a game reserve. Yeah. Game reserves. Yeah. And there, and it said something about the area could be um, thousands of acres, but it also the enclosure could be a few yards. Oh, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's and not necessary. And many operate on a no-kill, no-pay policy, so the owners ensure the kill with guides, feeding stations, use of dogs. So there's a feeding station. Mm -hmm. Animals come to the feeding station, sitting ducks, they kill them. Um, that doesn't seem right or... F anyway. Yeah, that's an interesting topic because, I mean, yeah. like, it, I'm torn on that a little bit right. because if you harvest the animal right. uh, and it's done humanely there, then... And I'm playing devil's advocate a yeah, little bit. You, they'll yeah, probably no. kill the animal quickly, and then harvest the animal, and as right. long as it's not trophy hunting, I believe right. that you should use all pieces of the animal. Right, I but, agree. Um, but I think um, something like that is in some ways maybe more humane than other hunting practices. To, to have a clean kill. Right, to right. have a clean kill and yeah. someone supervising and teaching them how to do it. And, you know, yeah. and I, I went to Africa and we went to game reserves and certainly I didn't want to see any animals killed there. But, I mean, I did understand, you know, that some people that that's, I don't agree with trophy hunting. You know what I mean? But I think in this case, if they're hunting for food, but it sounds like it, Teeters. I'm not, I think yeah, it's I'm more sure. of a trophy hunting. And then um, the other thing talked about accidents. Yes. Destroy property, injure, kill. Sure. Horses, cows, dogs, cats, hikers, hunters. My dog when I was a kid died from a hunter. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so. 2006, <laughs> yeah. Vice President Cheney shot a friend yes. while hunting quail on a canned hunting preserve. Yeah. Um, thousands of human injuries reported yearly. Bears, cougars, deer, fox, other animals who are chased, trapped, killed by dogs. Um, suffer, yeah. but so do the dogs who are often not killed, cared for properly during or after the hunt. Sure. They're chained and penned, denied routine vet care, lost in the hunt, turned loose, or they get hit by cars. I mean, I, that's the negative. Yeah. Um, uh, so in terms of the hunting regulations, they are really careful right. about, about right. If you follow how the to control the hunt. Yeah. Um, and hunting. there's tagging and when you can hunt, the yeah. times a year, and that's... Right, hunting hours, half an hour before sunrise and end half an hour after sunset. 
-hmm. I know there was a guy behind my house. Yeah, that hunted for years. At 8.30 at night. Oh. I heard a gunshot. I heard a couple gunshots. 8.30. Yes. I called Hopkinton Police, and this was two nights ago. I said, so how late are they, you know, how late into the evening? Because I didn't think it was that late. And they said half an hour after sunset, which would have been about 5 o'clock. Yeah. This is 8, 8.30, but it was a full moon, so I'm sure he... Had more light, yeah. Wanted to, but... But this is Those a man who's been doing. This is a man who's been doing it for many years. I'm yeah. not going to say what his license plate is. Um, so I, and then the other thing is apparently hunting season you. ended. Wait, my, my hunting season ended on December thirtieth. Yeah. yeah. So he's not. It's not legal. Legal the time, the day, right. or the time. So for me, if you're going to hunt, you need to follow the rules because they're for safety. Yes. Therefore. Um, the herd. Yes. You know, I know Western Nurseries appreciates and encourages hunting right. because it controls the deer who eat the plants. Right. Um, if there are too many deer eating their plants, right. they can't sell their plants. Sure. They encourage the coyotes. Right. Um, who, right. So, so I can understand. There's that. a balance there. there I mean, is and a balance. I, I think exactly they're right. Well, and then also from a humane perspective, if it's overpopulation, then they're going to starve. Then and right. And you're going to have sickness, and right. they're going to kind of in a way, maybe cull themselves, but that's an awful way to die as well from starvation or, right. you know, malnutrition exactly. or Exactly. So in a way, it's, I mean, nature it gets out of balance mm -hmm. because it isn't nature as much anymore. No, it isn't. There are, are people in buildings and not, not right. the same, and this, not the same predators. Right. Not the I same I mean, prey. think of our, where we live. I mean, All of it. any given time, I have 20 turkeys. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of turkeys. Yeah, we have I a lot love of the turkeys. I do too. Yeah. So then the bag limits... During the season, they're only supposed to get two antler deer per year. Oh, interesting. As many antler-less deer as you have valid antler-less deer permits for. Sure. Um, youth deer hunt day, one deer. So, you know, there are certain limits on how many they can, how many they can bring in. They have to re re report this within 48 hours yes. of, of the harvest, they yep. call it. Um, they have archery season. Shotgun season and primitive firearms season. Mm -hmm. Black powder, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I mm -hmm. really I can understand because I did I did um, riflery at a camp in, when I was eleven as well. Mm -hmm. And I to me it's and I love archery. Yeah. I, have, I have a target and I have arrows and bows. And yeah. for me it's more of you know it's, a sport. it's like darts. It's, a it's sport. can you can you I love that sport. too. So I love that. I just would rather not do it I on a like living animal. I don't like to kill anything either. Yeah, so. It's hard for me. I mean, I don't... I don't even kill f bugs very much. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's you know, just me. Yeah. And then they have I'm handguns likewise. not allowed, may not be in your possession during deer hunting. Yeah. So they have really good... Rules. Rules around And easements this. on where you can hunt. And this is the mass.gov. Yeah. Right, the easement. Um, primitive firearms, 500... No, this is talking about what they have to wear for orange. They have to have a lot of orange so people can see them, obviously. And I have to say, while you're looking at that, um, as an equestrian riding in the woods all the oh time. Oh, my gosh. Hunters are very respectful. I mean, very, I mean, all the years I've ridden in the woods and I ride in the woods all the time, hunters are always respectful. But again, you have to do your part. You have to wear a bright color. You have to wear orange. So be, And put bells on your your dog or put bells on you know so it doesn't sound like an animal rustling in the woods right those are things you know equestrians talk about and hikers can do it and mm -hmm. obviously dog walkers or mountain bikers i mean if you're riding during hunting season you want to identify yourself as a human being because no one none of them want to shoot a human being you know what i mean so it's of course not. It, you know that's there are some ways that us mm -hmm. You know, we're sharing that land with hunters. Yep. Then we need to kind of take a little responsibility on identifying ourselves as humans. You know right. what I mean? And I can see how a horse could, you know, sound like an animal. Of course. Well, it is an animal. You know, and I, when I'm riding <laughs> alone, you know, like I'm not talking to anybody. People don't hear my voice. Well, do you wear orange? I do, okay. yeah. Okay, so then that, that's Yeah, and we smart. have, like, I have vests in the barn and stuff like that. Yeah. So when we go out and ride, we, we generally wear orange. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to be careful. So it's just, well, or we ride in areas that they don't hunt. Right. So, again, it's really important that people that have their hunting licenses know where appropriate hunting areas are. And Absolutely. they're And they're... they're they're segregated for a reason. Yeah, and they have certain hunting seasons. Yes. So the archery season is six month Monday before Thanksgiving, yep. first Saturday after th Thanksgiving, 
every day except Sunday. Yeah. And I know I've heard shooting on Sunday, sure. which drives me nuts. So that's a question that I wasn't sure about because I think on private property, does that it doesn't change it? Because I didn't look that up, and I was curious about it as I was driving here. So it doesn't make a difference if it's on private property. I don't think or so because I think the point is that it's it's, all it's a time it should be a day of peace. Okay. Um, prohibited on Sundays. Well, it's mass.gov. Yeah, so, I didn't. Um, I didn't look it up. I, if anybody knows, call in and let me yeah. know. Because I always wondered if that it doesn't make sense to me that it would be. Yeah, me neither. I think the law. Uh, anyway, I had heard it somewhere that it was allowed then, um, on private shotgun, property. Then shotgun, which didn't is think the noisier so. one, obviously. Yeah. First Monday after Thanksgiving, ending second Saturday. Yeah. After that, so that's pretty brief. Yeah, it's a short. Then turnaround. primitive firearms third the Monday after powder, Thanksgiving yeah. ends December thirty first. Yep. Yeah. Except Sunday. So, um, yeah, and they're not allowed to have rifles or handguns. Right. Well, because of the range. I mean, you think of the right. proximity. I mean, a shotgun's very short range. Archery is very short range. Black powder certainly mm -hmm. short range. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a reason for that because if you have a long-range rifle, like in Idaho, you have long-range rifles, but you're on thousands and thousands of acres of BLM land or wherever. What Can the, you explain BLM? Oh, um, it's the Bureau of Land Management. Okay. So it's federal land. Actually, only 10% of Idaho is not Bureau of Federal Land Management land, which is crazy. It, most of it is owned by the and government. Was that, was that you, was that Native American land originally, or just oh, well, I mean, land management. It, Bureau of Land Management is forestry. Um, okay. They they cover. I mean, there it's all over. It's mountainous. It's areas where people aren't populated. I mean, Idaho is a different beast than it is here. There's just tons and tons and tons of like unpopulated. Nobody oh, lives okay. there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's empty land that they, oh, that they're yeah, managing. Yeah, that, that, uh, that nobody owns. Like park rangers kind of. Right. Okay. Or of sorts. I mean, it, it's under land Bureau of Land Management because mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's land that nobody owns or it's it's been federalized or whatever. So okay. people graze their cattle on it. Um, there's lots of areas to ride. There's areas to hunt. There's areas to, you know, it, a lot of people use it for recreation. Mm -hmm. There's area miles and miles, thousands of miles of where nobody lives. The Sawtooth Mountains are wilderness, mm -hmm. you know. So you, it's hard so to imagine around here, but right. it's, it's a different. And so would and that, you have a long-range rifle would there. Would that have been where... Um, Oh, we're getting close. Yeah. Bison would have roamed and and oh sure, yeah, not so. in the mountains. I mean, it depends on the topography of the land. Bison are more prairie creatures. Yep, they don't go up in the mountains oh, a, a whole lot. Flat. Yeah, so but you you know you have mountain goats and you have um, bighorn, you know, and you have deer and you have antelope and all those. Yep. All them live up there. All right. So, well, I think we're done. <laughs> Sorry. Feel free to email, email us in between. Yes. And for now, we'll see you next time. Thanks yeah, for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you.